born in 1940, and that was his balcony. Right over there. He was living in a tiny two-room apartment with his mom. And his mom was a very good musical teacher. So he got a nice musical school. Well, now the school that he was studying is bearing his name. But he was, well, he was a part of the generation of the 1960s, which was a generation that grew up on Duke Ellington, on Ella Fitzgerald, on Benny Goodman, on Louis Armstrong. Well, he'll never be old, but in the 1930s, Baku was one of the jazz hubs. Once again, Baku and Bill Isi were living in this regard. And you had people like Svasti, Lundstrom, performing here. Then you had some local, famous kind of jazz band masters. So Bagit was not the founder of the jazz per se, but he was brought up by the generation that grew up on the idols, like Ella Fitzgerald or Louis Armstrong. And all of a sudden, in 1962, the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev attended the exhibition in Manej in Moscow where he was furious. He couldn't understand the abstract art. So he called all abstractionist artists gays and he tried to outlaw all this anti-popular art, jazz included. And there was the famous Soviet saying, he who listens to the jazz today is going to betray his homeland tomorrow. So this guy became a victim of this kind of new move, but they got already addicted to jazz. Well, and what to do? Poverty is mother of invention. So, together with his friends, he tried not to miss any of the Soviet movies where they showed the Western spies. Because whenever they showed the Western spies in Soviet movies, well, they showed a normal person, but they had to tell me the message that there was something wrong with the guy. So they were playing jazz as a backup music to warn the audience that there was something wrong with the hero, the character. And he could watch one of the same film with his friends for 10 times just to get the ear on the wall chords. And when the professor left the audience, they said it was and they tried to replicate the music. And while replicating, he got gaps in attitudes. And whenever he got gaps, he got genes to help him out. And in his genes, he had the music of Mogan. So that was the reason why, out of Khrushchev's coalition, this gentleman and his friends started merging jazz with Mugan. And gosh, it worked. So it worked out into a very kind of soft kind of jazz. Well, but the music is quite interesting. I'm trying to get you a piece of it right now. Well, let's get a little bit closer because my sound is not that, well, the sound of my phone is not that very strong. Well, it, that could be one of his. Он сидит джазовый фон, а какая пойдет тема? Видите, джазовый фон с восточной темой. He was a virtuoso player, but while well, his lifestyle was taking a bad toll on him, because apart from being addicted to jazz, he was addicted to drugs too, like Wisotsky. And like Wisotsky, he died on the stage. Yeah. In 1979, a year before Wisotsky, he got a big concert program, Almaty, Frunze, Tashkent, and he had full houses while his performances. I'm sure you will recall. Well, but in his last concert in Tashkent, he got a heart attack in the middle of the concert. And he played it. He played it to the end so that no one could ever guess what happened to him, but he was dead pale after a concert, and the ambulance could do nothing. They brought him dead. He died two months short of his 40th anniversary. But he left a beautiful daughter, Aziza, who was born from his second marriage to a Georgian lady. Once again, a Georgian source of inspiration. Yeah, and shortly prior to his death, he sent one of his records to Montreux, the Jazz Festival. And in his letterhead, he wrote, If I ever happen to win, would you please? Never send the money, and the prize was 25,000 bucks. But bringing it to Soviet Union was impossible, it could get problems. So he said, I need no money. If I ever happen to win, would you please buy me a red grand That was a strong dream. Krasny Royal. Gosh, he started listening to it, and he pointed his composition on the desk. So he was the winner, and they bought him the piano. Yeah, because his, his body came a bit.
And the piano was not preserved by the family either. But while well, 10 years after his apartment became a home museum, he got a plaque. But as always in the Soviet Union, to become really recognized, you had to die first. So that's exactly what happened to one of these people. He would only turn 7 to 8 this year if he were alive, but the only way to travel was to And now we've probably paid attention to this building. Tell you the story of the family that lived in this particular house.